All right, so in this first example, we have some sample text and a red circle here. So on the left side, I just made sure the sample text was pretty long, just so we had enough text to scroll to trigger this animation. So what I'm gonna do first is with this text selected, as well as the section title here, I'm going to hit scroll group to put the text inside of a scroll group. I'm gonna extend the scroll group to the top of the artboard here. And I'm also going to just give it some room on the bottom. So I'm gonna move this content box down a bit. So now when we open up our preview, we can scroll on the left side here. So that's the first step. I'm also going to scale down this red circle all the way, holding shift and option, just so it's no longer visible on the canvas here. So now we can just select everything. We can hit behavior to put everything inside of the behavior group and open up the behavior designer. I'm gonna add another state, hitting this plus icon here. So we have the initial and new state. In this new state, I'm gonna scale back up the red circle so now we have our elements. So we have the initial state with the circle hidden and the new state with the circle visible. Now we just need a way to trigger this animation. So we wanna use a scroll gesture. So in this initial state, I'm gonna select the scroll group that we made earlier. I'm gonna add a gesture, select scroll. The target here is going to be the new state. And you see in this initial state now, this arrow appears and this arrow is determining how far we need to scroll to get to the next state. So let's just move the arrow to the end of the second paragraph here. So this is saying we're gonna to scroll to the end of the second paragraph, and by the time we do that, the red circle in the new state is going to scale all the way up. So let's open up a preview, and now we can scroll to the end of that second paragraph, and by the time we do that, the circle has grown to its fullest. So this feels nice and natural because we're scrolling at the same rate that the circle is scaling up. So really simple way to use a scroll gesture. So that's the first example. Let's do a few more examples now. So this next example is gonna be very similar to the first example. It's the same exact starting point. So we have this scroll group of text here on the left side, as well as the red circle. This time though, the behavior is just gonna be a bit different. So let's select everything once more, click behavior, open up the behavior designer. Now everything we selected is inside this behavior group again. Let's add a new state. And in this new state this time, let's just play around with the shape of the circle. So we can actually morph the circle into something else. So I'm just gonna select the circle and I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. So now we're in vector edit mode. So you see these points here appear of the circle, we can just kind of play around with these points now and kind of morph this circle into something else. Again, this probably isn't very functional what I'm doing, but you know, it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do inside of the behavior designer with shapes and scroll gestures. So again, to trigger this new state, in this initial state, we're gonna select the scroll group, we're gonna add a scroll gesture, and we're gonna target the new state. And again, we can just move this arrow to the end of the second paragraph of text here. So now when we go to preview, you'll see this circle morphing into something else as we scroll. So yeah, again, not exactly the most functional thing, um, but hopefully you guys are a bit more creative than I am and can apply these principles in your prototypes. So yeah, pretty cool. And again, it feels really natural using this scroll gesture to trigger this animation. So yeah, let's do a few more examples. This third example is going to be a bit more complex because it's gonna involve multiple states inside the behavior designer, but it's still pretty simple. So as you can see on the right side, I've made some concentric circles, each one bigger than the one prior, just so you can see them, and I've colored them differently. But right now I'm just gonna actually select everything and make them all the same size. So we can do something like 50 by 50. And let's just align them so you can't see the ones behind. And now we can just scale everything down so that you can't see anything. Cool, so this is gonna be a kind of our initial state. So again, let's select everything, open the behavior designer, You'll probably get the point by now. Um, let's make a new state. In this new state, we can start with the red circle or the first layer and scale it up like so. Then we can add another new state. 
And actually, let's just rename this three. This will be two. This will be one. So we have state one, two, and three. And this third state will take the one behind the red circle, so the orange one, scale it up a bit. And we'll just repeat this process until we have those concentric circles again. Great, so now we've made all of our states. So just to recap, we have state one, two, three, four, five, and six, which shows all of our concentric circles. So in state one, we're gonna select the scroll group once more. We're gonna add a scroll gesture to get to state two. And for each of these scroll distances, we'll just scroll the same distance. So this end position, will just make 200. So we're gonna scroll 200 pixels to get to the next state. So from one to two, we're gonna scroll 200 pixels. So let's see what that looks like. So scroll 200 pixels and this red circle, ap circle appears. Great, so now in this second state, again, we're gonna select the scroll group, add a gesture, select scroll. And from the second, we're gonna target the third. And since we ended at 200 pixels last time, we're gonna pick up at 200 pixels this time. So the start position will be 200 and the end will be 400. We'll just add another 200. And now let's see what this looks like. So we scroll 200 to expand the red circle, and then we'll scroll another 200 to expand the orange. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until all of the circles expand. So in this third state, the process is exactly the same. Select the scroll group, add a scroll gesture, target the fourth state, and we're gonna start at 400 this time and we're gonna end at 600. So we're just kind of adding 200 to where we left off. So let's see what this looks like. So there we go. And I'm just gonna do this for the rest of these states. So we'll be back when we reach state six. So I just continued this process until we had scroll gestures for each state. So let's just recap. So in state one, we scrolled 200 pixels to get to state two. In state two, we scrolled another 200. So we scrolled from 200 to 400 to get to state three, so on and so forth. So state three, we scrolled 400 to 600. State four to get to five, we scrolled 600 to 800. And then straight state five to state six, we scrolled 800 to 1000. So let's see what this looks like. So you see as we scroll 200 pixels, a new circle kind of animates in. And what we can do now is actually add one more state. And I don't know, we could do something like this. Let's select each of these circles. And maybe we do, hmm. Let's see if any of these look kind of cool. <laughs> so maybe we do this and we scale everything down a bit. So this is kind of what's happening with the elements. So that looks kind of cool. And let's name this state seven. And then the last place we scrolled or the last, yeah, so we ended at 1000 from five to six. So now from six to seven, we're gonna select the scroll group, add another scroll gesture. And this one will be 1000 to 1200. So we're just adding another 200 and we're gonna target state seven. So let's see what this looks like. Whoa, <laughs> kind of trippy, but pretty cool. And feels really natural using this scroll gesture to initiate this animation. So yeah, just some fun things you can do with scroll gestures. Again, not exactly the most practical, practical example, but hopefully you can apply some of these principles and you know, come up with something a bit more interesting than what I did. But yeah, I really hope this tutorial was helpful and these three examples kind of give you a better sense of how to use scroll gestures in your prototypes. Please give a thumbs up if you guys found this tutorial helpful. Comment with what you want to see next. I'm trying to put out at least one video per week, so stay tuned for more and I'll catch you guys in the next one.